Low fat, gluten free, keto, paleo, vegan, organic. You can find just about any item in the grocery aisle tailored to your food preferences. But no label is likely to cause as much debate as the one bearing these three letters, GMO. They stand for genetically modified organisms. We have been eating genetically modified foods in one form or another since they were first approved 25 years ago. Scientists and health agencies agree genetically modified foods are as safe as any other foods we consume, but there is an unease about genetic modification that is often fueled by how much we actually know about the science of it. Everything we eat has been genetically altered, altered using some type of genetic technique. So what our ancestors did 10,000 years ago was primitive genetic improvement where they would take, you know, a wheat plant that had some characteristics they liked, they would self-pollinate it, they'd grow it and they'd plant it, and they'd slowly start to change the gene pool through this very slow process. The most common way scientists alter a plant is by using a soil-borne bacterium that has the ability to insert its genetic material into a plant's genome. Scientists modified that bacterium to insert a desired trait from another organism. And traits can include ones to make some crops resistant to specific insects or specific weed killers, to withstand drought or flooding, or using a fragment of a virus to make a plant immune to infection, like a vaccine. So plants get viral infections as do people and so as humans um, most of us hopefully all of us get immunized so this is mechanistically different but conceptually similar why plant breeders and farmers want to grow crops that have been you know sort of immunized opponents argue this isn't natural and that there hasn't been enough long-term testing to prove there are no risks to consumers modern genetic approaches are no more risky than older conventional approaches and in some cases one could argue that there's even less risk because they are well characterized and they're regulated. Sylvain Charlebois from Dalhousie University specializes in risk indication in the food supply system. He sides with the science, but he says there's a good reason why so many people are uncertain about GMOs. The biotechnology industry has always uh, been uh, educating farmers, uh, the industry itself, but really uh, forgot the consumer in the end. And so all of a sudden uh, it, it appeared in, in their foods and of course uh, surprises is something that consumers don't necessarily like, especially when it comes to food safety. And that's why there's been, there's been this rebellion. You won't find a lot of genetically modified foods in the produce section in Canada. It's when you hit the processed food sections that you'll come across them. Corn, soy, canola, and sugar beets. They aren't the only genetically modified crops out there, but they're the big ones. Check the ingredients list of any number of candor packaged foods in the supermarket, and they'll be there, often under different names. Take corn, for example. It can be there in baking powder, citric acid, caramel coloring, xanthan gum, high fructose corn syrup, dextrose, and a whole array of ingredients sometimes lumped under words like artificial sweetener or natural flavors. 75% of everything that's processed in a grocery store uh, has at least one uh, genetically modified ingredient. So it's really out there. That's why there's a movement in Canada and the U.S. for mandatory and transparent GMO labeling. The non-GMO movement has decided to take, uh, take on a leadership role in labeling, and that's why we're seeing more and more non, uh, products that are labeled non-GMO. Uh, and it's been, it's been somewhat successful, even though the vast majority of Canadians don't even know what a GMO actually is. I think if you if you are to go with a uh, mandatory labeling policy uh, related to genetically modified ingredients, you would demystify um, the whole, the, the, the technology itself. Right now, labeling in Canada and the U.S. is voluntary. You won't see many products on the shelves declaring they're made with genetically engineered ingredients, but you will see plenty labeled non-GMO often bearing a seal like this, declaring a product is verified non-GMO. It's not an official certification from any sort of government health or food inspection agency. The independent non-GMO project says its goal is preserving and building the non-GMO supply chain. 
So of course, GMO is meaningless and non-GMO is even more meaningless. So in the United States, probably in Canada, we have this little butterfly and you can buy non-GMO salt and non-GMO sugar. And it's just a, it's a sort of a, a label that people are selling. Just to give you an idea of how often this label is used, we went on a little non-GMO grocery store scavenger hunt. Here we have juices, teas, olive oil, cat food, maple syrup, sugar, and even that non-GMO salt Dr. Ronald mentioned. Salt doesn't even have DNA. I prefer labels that are anchored to some kind of meaningful science and inspection. There is a form of labeling coming forward in the U.S. that scientists like Dr. Ronald are getting behind, requiring foods that are bioengineered or made from or derived from bioengineering to be labeled as such. Companies selling these products will also have to connect consumers with information about those ingredients. You'll be able to scan and figure out exactly what it is, and hopefully that'll bring down some fears when people understand it's going to be anchored to um, real information. This form of labeling may not be enough to change the minds of diehard GM opponents, but it could open up the discussion for other people who are on the fence about genetically modified food. Respecting the consumer is probably what's most important. If you actually hide something, uh, you should expect uh, a group of individuals to actually fight back or to react to uh, the unknown. What you put in your shopping cart is ultimately your choice. While we're not likely to see genetically modified foods disappear from our grocery store shelves, understanding where your food comes from and how it's produced may help you make more informed decisions about what you put on your dinner plate.